Maddie Fresh on the track up his state. And I'm bringing to you live my boys Alec and Nate, Tequila Ty, Jay Nelly, and Dylan in the building. So kick it back, pour the drink. We chillin' because I'm boozing and bettin' and ballin' like I'm two six in the blue kicks. Watch me move quick. Yeah, it's the blueprint. So who's getting involved? Welcome in to the show. This is booze, bets, and ball, baby. Welcome back to Booze Bets and Ball as we uh get ready for the last game of the regular season, Nate. Uh we just watched we just watched the college football playoff ranking show. Uh, don't know what to take away from that. Penn State stays at eleven. Tennessee stays ahead of them despite losing to twenty five to an unranked team and Hendon Hooker is now out for the year. Uh, just a lot to take in, but Penn State is actually going to need a lot of help to get a uh, New Year's Six ball at this point. Yeah, it went from. I don't know. A lot of talk about how Penn State should jump Tennessee after the Tennessee loss, and especially if they take everything into consideration, because now it's supposed to be what you look like going forward, not what you did, like in your resume necessarily, right? And Tennessee's just not going to be the same team after right. losing Hendon Hooker, and they got, I mean, they got annihilated last week against South Carolina. So um, I don't know. But, you know, they do have quality wins, obviously, right? They beat Alabama, um, beat LSU, but. And, and that's one thing Penn State lacks, I think, and it is a is a quality win. Penn State's best win is is who? Purdue, Purdue I guess. Yeah. yeah right. So, I don't know. so yeah, I, I think like you tweeted today, uh, Penn State is a little bit of victim of their schedule to some extent, but they beat everybody that they should have beat. Um, and like now Notre Dame is creeping up a little bit here too because you know with whatever. You know whatever uh, special treatment they get to go into the the beast uh, yeah. the New Year's Six Bowl and like they lost to Stanford and Marshall and mm-hmm. somebody else I can't remember who but like it, it's just kind of, it's very unfair <laughs> the way it's done the fact the fact that the um, third best Big Ten team is likely not going to make a New Year's Six Bowl is pretty sad. Yeah, you know, at first I I think a lot of people. I, th- I think USC losing Notre Dame helps Penn State because it increases mm-hmm. the chance that both uh, Michigan and Ohio State make yep. the playoff. But at the, at the same time, and I know this really doesn't matter, there there is a reality there where if Notre Dame wins that game, they probably jump Penn State because they're only four spots behind them, and USC is the sixth ranked team in the country. And I, I just think Penn State Penn State's problem is the fact that. They haven't beaten anyone good. I mean, yep. they had the two best losses in the country. They've lost to two and three. They had two on the ropes for three and a half quarters. They had three. You know, they had the lead in the second half. Of course, it didn't end great at all. But I, they really just are victim of the fact that Auburn sucks. Purdue blew their chances really to win the West. Uh, Minnesota wasn't as good with Tanner Morgan out and stuff. And they got unlucky. I mean, Michigan State, who we're going to talk about, really bad year after a really good year last year. So they only had two ranked teams on their schedule. They lost to both of them, but they've beaten every team they're supposed to beat, and they haven't just beaten them. Like they've they've killed pretty much everyone outside of Purdue. Yep, yep, and um, yeah, and you just wish that I don't know. You you wish, which is stupid, but like that Maryland was a little better, right? Or or at least won a couple of games, or. Purdue down the stretch ended up not losing to Syracuse and not who else? Iowa, I guess, whatever. Like, uh, but, you know, Notre Dame lost to Ohio State 21 10, lost to Marshall, beat Cal UNC BYU, lost to Stanford, beat UNLV, which is nothing, and then beat Syracuse, Clemson, and kind of really killed Clemson 35 14. Um, mm-hmm. Close play against Navy and then shut out Boston College. So, like, I, I see the resume standpoint of like ranking Notre Dame high. But if you're not going to hold losses to Marshall and Stanford, who are pretty bad teams, against them, then like, what what are we doing, really? You know, it, it's yeah. I don't know. Like Penn State should just go like go whatever it takes to go all in to beat one of Michigan or Ohio State every year, and like say the hell all to every other game because it seems to not, you know, it seems to not matter as much if you have a loss. Yeah, it, it seems they definitely value a good win over a bad loss. I guess yeah. is the best way to put it. And I 
I don't know what the better way to go about it is. Obviously, anytime you lose, it's not good. But yeah. there's a difference between losing to Ohio State and Michigan and losing to Marshall at home in a buy-in game. You know, yeah. like, I, I, I don't know. There's a lot of things to it I don't like. I mean, they were the first ten, and then going that was another day. But going on to Tennessee, like, they were the first team that made Spencer Rattler look like their projected yeah. first overall pick all year. And, like, I, you know, that defense – looked like an absolute joke and then they lose hooker and i don't know if if they're close with vanderbilt and penn state wins big does penn yeah. state get a nod there then i i don't know but it's just it's looking a little tougher and tougher each week now yeah. south carolina had 606 yards of offense spencer rattler was 31 for 38 for 453 uh and south carolina wasn't that good before i mean they were they were seven and four uh, mm-hmm. They lost to Georgia by 41 points. Right? They lost to Mizzou. The last week, Florida beat them 38 to six. So yeah. they're not a great team. I mean, they you know they have they beat AM, they beat Kentucky. Um, I guess that's their best win. Other than like Kentucky is their best win before Tennessee. Um, but yeah, like last week they looked like. And I'm I'm shocked they're not ranked actually. You know, this week. Yeah, I I, I was too. Yeah, uh, I think part of it is the fact that they play Clemson this week, and for some reason the committee wants to keep <laughs> one loss of Clemson. Yeah. yeah, wants to keep them down and giving them another chance to beat a ranked team, I guess, isn't uh, what they want to do. But, yeah, just a lot. As the SEC teams with two losses are getting a lot more leeway than everyone else, it seems. Yeah, and unfortunately, like, even if South Carolina goes and beats Clemson this week, it doesn't do Penn State any good because the ACC champ is still going to get into the Orange Bowl. Mm-hmm. So, right, I mean, you, you look at the schedule this week. LSU is playing A&M. I find it hard, very hard to believe that LSU should lose to A&M. Um, USC plays Notre Dame, right? So that game, there's really no good winner for Penn State there, like you said, because no. if, if UFC or USC wins, then they're, you know, in prime spot for a playoff spot, I guess, because mm-hmm. they'd be 11-1, and then they're playing um, Oregon in the championship game. If Notre Dame wins, they likely jump Penn State. Um, and they would they would go to the Orange Bowl then I suppose right they'd go to the Orange yeah Bowl that that's the thing uh, or they can't because they play the are the Orange Bowl <laughs> tie-ins are the Big Ten the SEC and Notre Dame versus the ACC even though Notre Dame pretty much is an ACC team yeah. uh, they fall on the other side of that which is crazy but yeah so that would be Clemson and Notre Dame if that's how it worked out uh yeah I think so yeah okay, that's stupid. And they played in the the regular season. You don't yeah. you don't see that too often. Like where teams that, yeah, you don't see that often at all unless it's the playoff. So that is. Uh, and then you got Oregon. So Oregon's going to lose to USC probably. So they're behind Penn State. And then Tennessee, you know, they're right now ahead of Penn State. And if they beat Vanderbilt, they'll probably stay ahead of Penn State. So you know, the best yeah. Penn State's best case scenario, I suppose, is to go to ten. Um. <laughs> TCU could lose. Like you want TC, TCU to lose. I, I think. I, I think. It, I, I, at this point, I don't know if. I think you'd rather TCU lose this week because I think they play Kansas State in the Big Twelve Championship, and then if Kansas State beats them, they both might be ahead of Penn State. Yeah, but that's okay if. Well. I guess it's so if, if but if it's not okay for the I mean no one wants the Cotton Bowl let's be honest but no, that it's okay for the it, Rose Bowl though right that's what yeah you're for the Rose Bowl it. yes yes you're kind of banking on the Rose Bowl now so you want TCU yeah. to lose you want USC to lose and I guess that is the out like we talk about Notre Dame jumping Penn State or whatever but the Orange Bowl I mean Alabama's not dropping right and, and you got Tennessee, Alabama, LSU, all potential shots at the Sugar Bowl. So one of those are going to get the Orange Bowl, no matter what happens through the rest of the season, probably. Yeah, uh, Penn State's chances of making the Orange Bowl are, I, unless somehow LSU and Alabama both, or two of, two of Alabama, LSU, and Tennessee lost this week, yeah. I think their chances are zero because there's four yep. SEC teams ahead of them. So that would, game. right? One Georgia would go in the playoff. The high, the second highest one gets the Sugar Bowl. The third highest one gets the Orange Bowl, and then the fourth one is either getting the Cotton Bowl or the Citrus Bowl, which will probably be where Penn State is. Uh, Penn State, Tennessee, 
in the Citrus Bowl wouldn't be bad. I mean, that would be that would have been a hell of a game if if Hendon Hooker was still playing. I don't know if they. I guess they still. That, that could be a likely outcome. Yeah. Um, but you know, I, I don't know who's who's behind them in the Citrus Bowl. Now, then you drop to Ole Miss, who, you know, if it's Penn State, Ole Miss, Ole Miss is is fun, but they, you know, if, if Lane Kiffin is leaving there, then mm-hmm. they're going to be in turmoil and that's just not a fun game anymore. So like praying for the yeah. Rose bowl and man, if it's somehow Penn state USC in the Rose bowl, I think Penn state gets waxed <laughs> or what they, well, that, I don't know. We'll see. But like, uh, we'll see. that would be a hell of a fun game at least. That, that'd be something that would get yeah. the fan base super excited. Uh, and to play against Caleb Williams would be really fun too. Yeah. That would be entertaining. I, I would have liked the Orange Bowl. It's just Penn State hasn't been there in a very long time, like 0- 05 mm-hmm. season, I think was the last time. So get back down, down there would be cool and play Clemson yeah. would yeah, be fun. Yeah. But I, I just don't see that happening unless somehow. And the, the other thing is they have LSU all the way up to five now. So even if they lost to Georgia in the SEC championship game, which I expect them to do, they're not going to fall out of the top 10 from five, I don't think. So that yeah, doesn't no. help Penn. If they were at like seven, I could maybe see it, but not from five. Yeah, I agree. And you know, they're hanging their hat on their Alabama win. Yeah. Uh they beat Old Miss pretty good, but like Old Miss maybe wasn't as good as we thought they were, right? And and that's the best win that they have. And they, they got destroyed by Tennessee, and then you know, they probably should have beat Florida State, but that was a weird game at the end. Um it's just so close, right? And and there what I don't like about it is there's no there seems to be no consistency. There, there's no like linear thought process. And people talk about this all the time in the committee and what mm-hmm. they do, right? It, it's why, you know, is LSU the fifth best team in the entire country? I don't know. I, uh, they have a couple of bad losses, right? And um, they, they lost by 27 points. Penn State lost by whatever, 27 points or something, give or take as well to, to Michigan. But then they also lost to Ohio State. LSU lost to Florida State. Uh, Tennessee got destroyed by an unranked team. Like, and both of them are still ahead of Penn State with the same record. It just doesn't. Mm-hmm. It, it is just a total SEC bias, and I don't yeah. think there's any other way to to call it. You know. Yeah, I mean, even Clemson being behind Alabama and LSU shows that with just one loss, and it's just, that is kind of crazy. But uh, I guess the only thing Penn State can do to help themselves is win this week, and. Let's hope that happens. We'll get to that in a second. But they did help themselves by winning this past week in what was, I don't know, very I, – I, it felt like two games were played in that game, in my opinion, because the first quarter was Oof, all yeah. over the place. Uh, Rutgers had a 10-7 lead and had the ball with the chance to go up more. And then next thing we know, they fumble on like a little dump-off pass mm-hmm. and Penn State takes it back for a touchdown and – ends up scoring 48 unanswered points, and that's the game. Um, Penn State, two defensive touchdowns, a special teams touchdown. Almost a third. Yeah, like a, Pre- pretty a much penalty. should have been a third. Yeah. yeah I, a they had a pick call. six called back with, like, a, I don't know, was it a blindside blocker? Um, um, it it, yeah. it didn't even like have any. From play, yeah, it, right? had, it had zero impact on the play. But, yeah, so Penn State, realistically, I mean, if you count, they did score a touchdown then on that drive. Pretty much four non-offensive touchdowns, which I guess that's good and it's also bad. I mean, you're not, you're not going to be mad about scoring, but the offense was a little shaky at times. Uh, the offensive line, obviously, dealing with a lot of substitutes in there, and I think it kind of showed for a little bit early in that game, and then eventually everyone settled in and the run game got going, and that was that. So. Yeah. I don't know. There's there's not much to take away from that. Penn State did what we all thought they were going to do. I kept saying I thought the line being 19 was a joke. That that I thought that was way too low. Um, turned out to be so. I don't know. I, I don't have much to take away. I, I think uh, yeah. I, th- I think you tweeted. I am. I have gone from annoyed to concerned. <laughs> so, so I, I mean, it did look good. Like the the offensive possessions were pretty bad. Like pretty bad at the beginning yeah they were they they were i again we we were talking about this before espn doesn't have the drive by drive up but yeah maybe it's for the best um because in the beginning it was pretty it was pretty gross and only 21 first downs right that's not very good um passing game looked pretty rough i mean throughout the game just 
maybe not the most accurate day for either Clifford or Aller. Um, but my goodness, like the 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 freshman running backs are just are just the best thing that's happened to Penn State in so long. Um, yeah. Katron Allen, uh, 117 on 11 carries with a 59 yarder, right? Which um, didn't get touchdown, but that's okay. And then Singleton, nine on six or 62 on nine, uh, and then the 100 yard kickoff returns. Like they are just, they are so good. They are electric, and it's so fun. Yeah. And I hope they're both back next year, uh, and you know, doing things. So. Yeah, you know, I was uh, I was having this conversation with my brother. I. I'm interested to see what the Big Ten does in regards to offensive freshman of the year. Hmm. Because are they going to pick someone away from, I don't know who, I'm trying to think of like a freshman that's having a really good year, and I'm kind of struggling. to. I know Dalian Hayden has stepped up at running back for Ohio State, but he doesn't have nearly the amount of carries that these two have. Um, I, I don't know. Are they going to give it to both of them? I, I have a hard time seeing them pick between the two of them. I should have kept track of this, but they Singleton won it twice, I think, at least, right? And and K. Yeah. Allen won it twice too, or no? He won this I, week. Yeah, I think he's won it twice too. Yeah. Yeah, it's I mean, it's interesting. They should. I mean, frankly, they should both get it, right? Like this mm -hmm. team, um, they both bring something, and they should share that award. And I don't, yeah, I don't know. I haven't watched enough of what's going on in the you know the nether regions of the Big Ten West um, to know who else is good, but. Mm -hmm. They're the best we've seen out of any team that we played. So, yeah, that is a that's something I was thinking about, and um, I don't know. We'll we'll see what happens with that. Obviously, uh, have this week still. It's a big game, senior day for uh, Sean Clifford, the third one. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's, I mean, it's technically his third senior day if you go by eligibility. But um, yeah, so that that's gonna be that on uh, Saturday at four. Weird start time for November, 4 o'clock, but uh, it's better than noon, so I'll take it, obviously. Tyler's here. It apparently sounded not the best on something there, but whatever, we'll revisit that when he comes on. Um, yeah. I stopped paying attention to you for 20 seconds there. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, no. So. Well, no, I was just talking about the start time on uh, oh. for this game. It's a, it's a little different than usual for a uh, November game. 4 o'clock. I think that's the latest – a Big Ten game can start in November, yeah. So, I mean, yeah. it beats noon and uh, lets us see the Michigan-Ohio State game, too, which is nice. Yeah, that, that'll be good. I, who do you, who are you rooting for in that game? Are you just rooting for a close game so they both make the playoff? Yeah, I think, you know, it, it really pains me, I guess, to root for two teams in the division to make the playoff, but it gives Penn State the Rose Bowl, so it's kind of a give-and-take type thing. But, yeah, you know, I, I – what I mentioned to you last week was I thought Mich or Ohio State winning would be better because they're the home team. And, you know, Michigan home teams usually looked at a little worse if you lose. And Michigan probably won't have quorum now, so that would make it look even worse. But people are saying that Ohio State has better wins than Michigan because they've beaten Penn State and Notre Dame, who are both in the top 15, whereas Michigan's just beaten Penn State, that it almost benefits both of them, if you want both of them to go, for it to be Michigan that wins. I don't think I don't know if they're going to win with Corum, without Corum. It's a big in, hole for them. In and, the horseshoe, I mean. Well, uh, both both those starters are on. Yeah. Right? The Donovan is out too. Yeah. So, I mean, last year, or last week against Illinois, they scraped by with, you know, they were they were down to their third, fourth, fifth running back, I think, at some point in the game there. So, mm -hmm. uh, well, they I feel like <clears throat> I feel like without their two starters, they they're going to struggle to do anything offensively because JJ McCarthy still doesn't look that good. Um, they a grinded out kind of game would have benefited Michigan, and I don't see how they do that now, right? And um, yeah, I feel like the Ohio State offense is is uh, going to show up, and they they might just. They might just blow them away. So we'll see. Um, uh, yeah, maybe the the thoughts of a two two Big Ten teams in the playoffs are going out the window with Blake Cor Blake Corum, whatever injury he has. So yeah, uh, not not great, I guess there in that regard. But getting back to Penn State, then uh, Michigan State this week. I 
I don't know if there was a more disappointing team in the Big Ten this year than Michigan State. They're currently five and six if they lose to Penn State. Obviously, five and seven a year after going eleven and two, and they won the mm-hmm. the Sugar Bowl. I think I, I they won a big bowl. Was it the Peach or the Sugar Bowl? One of those two last year against Pitt. Um, yeah. So well. yeah. So that's that for them. Uh, we were talking about this. They lost to Indiana last week, who we know Penn State beat pretty handedly um, in double overtime, thirty nine to 31 indiana we thought this was the typo we looked for about five minutes on it indiana completed two passes in that game and won and scored 39 points uh, i've never seen anything like that i mean i guess if you're watching army and navy you come to expect that but usually they're not getting the 39 points so that was uh that was interesting i mean michigan state outgamed them 540 to 288 and lost in double overtime yeah, but that, yeah, um, they lost. Yes, that's true. But I, but I do think you know just the fact that they outgamed them so much, uh, you know, they had some things go wrong. Like they couldn't convert third or fourth downs, right? They didn't turn the ball over a bunch, so they they were moving the ball. They just couldn't convert some of those plays. Mm-hmm. But to get five hundred plus yards, when's the last time Penn State had five hundred yards of offense? It may well, not be this year. I don't like it. I've been looking at every game, and I, I'm not sure that it's been this year. So, like, they still move the ball probably better than I, I'm 100 percent sure better than Penn State did against Indiana. So, you know, maybe you don't write them off all the way, but um, they are a wholly disappointing team. Like, they were they were top ten preseason or so, like top top ten, top fifteen, and they yeah. they just fell apart uh, once they went to Washington. In that game they they've gone downhill since. Uh, Navy last week um, won and beat a ranked UCF team with with no passes completed. So, yeah, there's that. I mean, uh, Penn State Penn State has over 500 once this year, 572 against Ohio. Okay, okay, thank you. They've Very got good. they've gotten uh, in a 480 three times. Okay, it's not 500, but yeah. So, so yeah. Uh, I don't know. And like Michigan State scored points, uh, scored 28 against Washington, only scored seven against Minnesota. But in the last couple of games, I guess 31 against Dillon or Indiana, only 21 against Rutgers. So right, maybe they, maybe that was a fluke last week. I'm not worried about this one. I'm, I'm less worried about this one probably than I was against Rutgers or Maryland for, Penn, for a Penn State win. I, I think Michigan State just, I don't know. They, the culture wise, they're, they're pretty, in, they're in pretty rough shape. They, they had those guys suspended. They built their entire yeah. team mostly through the transfer portal. I think, I think this is how you don't do it in the transfer portal: is reload your, you know, mm-hmm. half of your starters there, just because culture matters, and yeah. it's hard to do that. Like, you know, Penn State getting a couple of guys here and there to fill spots—that's um, one thing. But Michigan State got twenty odd transfers again last year, and they did it the year before, and they hit with Kenneth Walker and some of those other guys. But that's lightning in a bottle type stuff, and I don't see how you do that year over year right you have to build the program bottoms up and it's just it puts it on really shaky footing and now everybody wants mel tucker to get fired so you know it snowballs yeah it does um the one thing i will say about michigan state is they do need to win this game for full eligibility i don't know if that's an you know an added thing for this team and an added motivation that they're worried about or not i mean obviously trying to beat a ranked team would also kind of be the bowl game for them at this point so there are those kind of things you have to look out for. Um, I think we kind of thought the same could happen last week with Rockers because mm-hmm. it was a big game for their bull eligibility life. I, I think they just got behind so quick that any tricks they had up their sleeve were just thrown out the window. So if I'm Penn State, I think I try to do the same thing this week and get out to a sizable lead early to take away that whole nonsense yeah, that could get in there. You know, I just kind of think about the – Last couple times, Penn State lost to Michigan State when they shouldn't have. Uh, like 2018, I think they faked a field goal, scored a touchdown on it. Like they've they've done some goofy things to Penn State when you know Penn State yeah. didn't put them away when they should have. So here's hoping this year they can. I guess uh, we'll see how many guys are back. We know Parker Washington won't be there. Joey Porter maybe. I don't know. Olio Fashano. Don't know. Kaden Wallace, yeah. don't know. Yeah, I mean, getting at least two of those guys back would be nice. Uh, give some, give the offensive line some reinforcements that I think they need after last week. Joey Porter, I mean, 
I don't know if you need them, but it'd be nice. I mean, they have Coleman, who has 700 yards and seven touchdowns this year. Having Porter out there would definitely be a little helpful, I think. So would like to have him out there. Not sure if that's going to happen. Obviously, we expect this to be his last game at Beaver Stadium, too. So would be nice to have him out there, and I'm sure he does want to get out there if he can. Oh, yeah, I'm sure he does, right? Um, but, you know, like what they've managed to build in – depth in the secondary is really good. Like Johnny Dixon had the interception last week. Um, mm-hmm. Kalen King is playing really well still. People are talking about him, even though he I, – I didn't watch the first Rutgers touchdown back again, but he got beat on that badly. He was 10 yards away from the guy that caught the ball. Um, but otherwise, he's played really, really well. So, I don't know. I don't think he missed Joey Porter that much. I mean, he's an All-American. You want to have him there. But the the heart of the defense has been the secondary for the better part of the year. So let those young guys that are going to be there again next year come back. I think Johnny Dixon can come back and mm-hmm. um, Kalen King can come back. So yeah, that's okay. Move yeah. on. I, I the offensive line worries me more than the yeah. secondary does still. Um, and, and that that was a kind of rough start last week against Rutgers. They gave up two sacks in the first few drives, and after giving up none uh, the week before. So, I don't know. Michigan State's defensive line, probably more talented than, than Rutgers is going to be. So, you, you worry about that some. But, I don't know. Same thing, though. Build depth. You know, get people experience. They burned Drew Shelton's red shirt last week. So, they did. he's in He's in it for good now. And, you know, just start getting ready for 2023 again. You're still going to play Sean Clifford, so we won't even bother talking about that. Um, but, you know, start, start building the guys for next year. Yeah, uh, really quick on the Sean Clifford thing. I, I think the way they've handled the quarterback rotation has been good. Use Clifford, blow out the other team, let Allard do whatever he wants to do. If you want to throw on, you know, third and one from your own 10, if you're up by 30, go ahead and do it. And I, mm-hmm. I think that is that has worked fine, uh, you know, doing that. I, I really don't have any problems with how that's gone. Hopefully they can do it again this week. It would be... It would be nice to blow out Michigan State after the way they've always seemed to screw Penn State in a couple seasons. Uh, you know, last year, last year, not a huge yeah. impact, but obviously 2017, 2018 really stick out. It would be, be nice to get them back there for those games. Yeah, and Jaden Reed is back. You didn't mention him before. He's, yeah. he's 600 yards this year. Um, the last year in that game in the snow, he, he came up with a couple of really impactful plays towards the end, right? And it reminds me of who was the guy, 2017, 2018, the wide receiver. Uh, oh. uh, Felton Davis, mm-hmm. right, who yep. was killed two years in a row. So, I don't know. So, so maybe Joey Porter, you want him back just to stop. There you go. Yeah. yeah, I think definitely would be nice. I know it's different. Uh, what, Fitzpatrick? What's his name? Fitzpatrick? No, not Fitzpatrick. The dude on the Steelers that uh, got his appendix taken out, he was back in a week. Uh, I don't can't know. remember his name for some reason. Um, but, yeah, so I, I guess it, it could happen, could be back. Obviously, it's a little different with a college kid than a pro, but we'll see. It, w- it would be nice to get him back. Um, maybe we'll see, uh, we'll see a Sean Clifford to Liam Clifford touchdown this week. I was surprised we didn't get one last week, but <laughs> – I think for the home crowd, yeah, they might. The the cake, right? And then, like, they just, then Sean can just, like, wave goodbye, and it's perfect. It's perfect passing of the torch. Yeah. So. I, I think that would be a, a good way to end it. Uh, and I, I think Franklin wants to beat Mel Tucker good, too. They've kind of become recruiting rivals this year. Uh, I think Franklin would like to keep him down, considering he has enough problems with Day and Harbaugh. I don't think he needs more competition in there. So I definitely think Franklin would try to make a statement this week. And if he could. Yeah, that'd be cool. Right. I don't know. What do you got? I got maybe let's call it 35, 17 Penn state. Yeah. I was thinking somewhere in there, like 38, 20, 38, 17, 34, 14. I think it'll be somewhere in there. Uh, I do think Michigan state can score a little, I, I don't think their defense is that good at all. I mean, they give up nearly 27 points per game. And I know a lot of that maybe came to Ohio State, but yeah. overall, I mean, they give up they give up 180 rushing yards a game, which I guess which is, is good. a lot. Which is good. It works out for Penn State. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, because Penn State would like to, I guess, just stay on schedule with the run game, which has worked. So if they can run, they will, I think, is what they'd like to do. I agree. All right, let's bring Tyler out. So yeah, apparently I, I I sounded weak because I said the, CF, the college football committee favoring the SEC is unfair. And, okay, maybe unfair is the wrong term, but it's bullshit. How about that? It's, like, ridiculous, yeah. and it's yeah. 100% true. Right, um, and other teams. I like a cry baby a little bit. That's. I think it's an objective fact, though, that they do. Okay. <laughs> we should have beat Michigan and Ohio State. That's. Just I agree. Something. Oh, I agree with that too. I mean, I yeah, one of the other, one or the other. Um, I don't know. But, I think I think the resumes in front of us are more impressive right now. That's just what I think. I think it makes perfect sense while we're at eleven. I. I mean, maybe if you're. If you're looking at the wins, yeah, but no one has better losses, I guess. It's, it's kind of our argument is a lot of these teams have lost really, in worse you, ways. I guess. But and you can argue that we should have probably beat Ohio State with how we played, but yeah. then they dominated those final ten minutes. That's not a good look. And then anyone that watched the Michigan game never thought we had a chance. No, that I that it wasn't agree with, said, but, that we just never had a chance that game. So I mean, sure we lost to the two and three teams, but we got our ass kicked those games yeah. for the most but part. But if you're gonna take if you're going to take it right now in Penn State against Tennessee when Hendon Hooker is out, like I, I think. See, I can agree with that. I would agree with that. Um, well, I think at the same time, they can't drop Tennessee too far considering they have Bama and LSU ahead of them, which they've beaten. Yeah. They yeah. Beat but it's a different yeah. circumstance, too. That, that's the only thing. Like they are supposed to take everything into account, right? And maybe yeah. find the best teams for, you know, the, the playoff games and the New Year's Six games out of. All the teams that exist to make those the best matchups possible. And I think a Tennessee team without their starting quarterback, who's going to be a Heisman finalist, isn't the same team anymore, right? So that's as much as anything. I, I don't even have such a problem with LSU, even though they got their doors blown off against Tennessee. Um, they've beaten Bama. They beat Old Miss. So that, that one's less egregious to me than keeping Tennessee above Penn State, frankly. I didn't see the Tennessee game. When did Hooker get hurt? Like it how late, late. It, it, it was, was late. It was yeah. late. It was late. I could also see the committee putting them where they're at now to see how they play this week with the other quarterback. So mm-hmm. let's go out and drop like 50 points and they're going to stay in front of us. But if they mm-hmm. go out and struggle against Vandy, then maybe they'll drop them. And that's fair. I, just, I think it's like a wait and see at this point with them. If it was the final week of the season, it's a whole different scenario. Yeah. And that's the other yeah. thing. It doesn't really matter right now, right? Until two weeks from now is when it matters. So exactly. So there's a lot they got to look at still. We got Thanksgiving. Is that what yeah. we're talking about now? You got a drink, Tyler, or no? I, I did not have the time to think of a drink, but <laughs> I mean, it's this is a week where it doesn't really matter what you're drinking. You're just drinking. <laughs> yeah, Start especially tomorrow, uh, tomorrow night. Drink. Yeah, yeah, the most feral night of the year. <laughs> what? Um, so, what, what's your favorite side? This has been a topic of conversation. Favorite side? Oh, my mom makes some bomb stuffing, so I'm a big yeah. stuff guy. Me too. Okay. That's my favorite. Um, so yeah, I like that, and then a, a sweet potato casserole because that's like pre-dessert if it's done the right way, which I really like. Yeah, this is going to be probably a hot take, but I'm a big fan of mac and cheese when it's homemade and stuff for these type of holidays. Oh yeah. You know? Okay, so my wife and I were having this conversation on the way home today, and. Like up north, you eat mac and cheese with for Thanksgiving. I've never heard of it until we moved down here. It's like a total southern thing, but I didn't think up. up yeah, there. I mean, we started doing it in the past like five years, probably. But it's just I don't know. It's I think it's a food that everyone likes, so people are starting to incorporate it more, no matter where you are. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So you get that, and then mashed potatoes and sweet potatoes, and you got you got carbs on carbs on carbs, so, man. and yeah. stuffing too. So bread, right? It's like oh gosh, yeah. Be I'm not protein in our, in our Thanksgiving meals, I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But hey, it's a great, like, what? I don't know, five day drinking bender for most people. Yeah. I mean, if you count the uh, the weekend with the game and stuff, I mean, mm-hmm. from, from Wednesday to Sunday, might might gain 10 to 12 pounds. I, I wouldn't be surprised at this point. Uh, it's gonna be a long week, long I guess weekend if you count tomorrow night starting the weekend. It is the weekend, right? I mean, yeah, tomorrow yeah. night's the weekend for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it does feel that way. Um, can't wait to go. The local bar in my area that everyone hangs out in is a former house. Okay, so <laughs> uh, you got it. You got to imagine like 
your like your living room and like I, I don't know what room you got next to your living room if you call it the den if you got a dining room whatever but like kind of I guess envision a a kitchen that goes into like a den with no wall it's like one room it's kind of the size of that and I, there's supposed to be about 150 people there so oh. I'm uh I'm interested to see how that goes should be should be interesting might be a little hot so, uh, it's, 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 it's gonna be stuff it's gonna be stuff um there's one toilet too that'll that'll be uh quite for guys and girls are just one total no there's there's one total and usually when the guys go like you know the door just stays open and everything but uh yeah so interested to see how that sounds like it's still a house be. actually yeah it kind of does <laughs> sounds like it's it, the, uh, it is the upstairs the upstairs is apartments and the downstairs is Jesus. the bar yeah that's yeah. a little weird <laughs> My uh, my bars are just the Penn State bars, so yeah, you you have it a little easier. There's a lot more, a lot more room to be. Yeah, but it's in. a lot weirder, I think. Like, I think that's just like the nice hometown feel. Like, I literally met a yeah. college campus for my Thanksgiving Eve. That's true. Nay, what about I mean, you? Thanksgiving Eves, what are those like? Uh, down here, well, it's just the family, right? So we will um, we're gonna go to our friends for Thanksgiving up in the woodlands, which is an hour away. It's an hour north of here. So that sucks because uh, to dr get drunk, can't get too drunk and drive home for an hour, right? So I bet you have a little kid you can do. Like this guy's license or something. He does, yeah, he's got his license. So, but yeah, so we'll probably yeah, somebody. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, tomorrow I think tomorrow we're gonna go to the movies. <laughs> so we're gonna we're gonna drink there and then we'll come home and then Friday I'll be like a I'm gonna cook a turkey at the house and probably do the pool in the hot tub. And Friday will be the real drunk day around here. Yeah. All right, not bad. <laughs> so, no, but it's fun. Like, I mean, if for nothing else, right, you just like get a few days off of work and you just relax and don't worry about anything for a while. Yeah, that's always nice. So, so do the movie theaters down there uh, sell alcohol or are you yeah. bringing that? No, oh, they, they do? sell it. Yeah, yeah. so um, we have a couple. We have one called Star Cinema where they sell, they have a full menu and they like bring it to your seat and booze and beer that's and like all hot food and everything. There's kind the of a place, yeah. Yeah, I kind of a place like that, but it's like, it's not a movie theater. It's kind of like a big room and they have a projector, so they don't show movies until the they house. come out on DVD. Yeah, seriously. It's, 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 pre house. it's pretty much a, it's pretty much a Every, house. Everything right? in Hazleton is a house. It's just the house yeah. converted to a business. Pretty much, pretty much. And the point is that like, they don't show the movies until they come out on DVD because they just put it. Are you in the <laughs> yeah, it's not it's not like a movie theater, but yeah, that that place like they bring you the food and stuff. Yeah. No, they they've had those down here for a long time, and they're it's it's better, I think, right? It's fun. It's better. It's a better way to see the movie because then you don't have to, like you can have a few beers while you're watching it, but um, it's not as good of a movie theater experience. No, I feel Seats like start losing interest in the movie and more interest in the alcohol once i start doing that yeah yeah well what else i guess that's it though yeah it's fun it's just the it's the start of the holidays so it's the best time of the year no well i guess you're in the warm weather all the time i hate the cold weather so like as much as the holidays are cool i can't stand this time of the year <laughs> it yeah up there it's worse i, I mean i think tomorrow it's gonna be 70 so <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think it. We might get forty tomorrow, which will be nice. It was warm today. It was like fifty-five at one point. That was nice. Yeah, 50 I'll be tomorrow. PM tomorrow till about two AM Sunday. <laughs> yeah, it it is gonna be that kind of weekend. Uh, gotta gotta go to senior day. Get get that out of the way. Penn State uh, is um is your is your friend coming or no? Wherever you are, State College. No. No. Let's do that. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, you should have one in there, dude. <laughs> I just want to say, I, I didn't specify who it may or may not be, but take a trip to Jersey or wherever. Yeah. yeah okay. Alec, like you're gonna cut that part. <laughs> uh, I mean, if this is like right at the end, I'm not gonna cut it. This. Late. There's there's maybe three people that watch this slate into this, so I, I don't think you have to worry about it, honestly. Um, I think they're all my dad's friends. The people that watch this slate into the into it, as far, from what I've heard, that's that's what I know. Uh, everyone else maybe gets to the intro. 
So. We need an algorithm where it's like that, or uh, we need a bot that will just watch and watch and watch. To drive yeah, get the, the get the viewing hours up. Yeah. Yeah. Alex, got to yeah. be better than cutting this up into clips. I agree. Yeah, I, agree. I I will. Uh, that's that's your off season it. chore is to figure out how to do that and put them up. Yeah, that 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 definitely will be, especially you know in the off season we'll get more guests and stuff to keep it interesting when there's not well, games. Well, there are a lot come. more stories and drinking power. <laughs> this guy yeah yeah and we'll have you know justin doing basketball bets and all that good stuff i'll go into the betting with justin i need to make some money somehow that's not working <laughs> i uh i don't know what his hit rate's been lately he sent a lot when he submitted them and hasn't showed us how they've ended so i i don't know yeah don't we know. haven't kept track of him very well right which kind of our fault no i i, sh I should have been but... we'll just keep a Justin Tracker. Yeah, I, I should actually make one of those and like make a graphic for it. I, I think I'll start doing it for basketball, maybe, and then we'll just bring it in the next year at this point. But that 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 definitely will be in the works. Get him; it'll motivate him too. At, going into his senior year next year, he'll you know he'll he'll want to do good. Impress the ladies. Yeah, big big wrestling tournament tonight too. I know. I just saw that Kirk Fleek won. Yeah, eight five, and Brooks won too. But everybody knew Brooks is going to win. And Starachi is up next against uh, Mackay Fla Mackay Lewis. So that's a big one. The uh, hockey team won too tonight. Yeah, I don't know. They played. I don't know who this is. Albany. I don't know. It says oh, A. Yeah. I don't know who that is. Oh, it's a. Uh, it's just actually like Anchorage. It's one of the Alaska schools, actually. Oh, yeah, it's Alaska. Yeah, <laughs> they played Alaska. All right, well, they beat Alaska in hockey. I think that's usually a good sign. I, I mean, I would hope so. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you would think so. Anybody want to talk World Cup? Um, I, I was you know, watching. I, 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 I watched the last say, five minutes or something. And that was it. I watched the first I, half. I don't know how people are like legitimately into that all the time. I mean, they. They score once. I've been walking on Friday. I'll be at the bar. I mean, I, the best way to describe that sport is honestly like blue balls because you get excited over like almost scoring. Like I, I like I don't know how else to put it. Like it is very, you get happy by missing in a sense because you almost got there. Like I, seriously, and then I've never seen people fall over from. The smallest. Oh, that's the worst. Yeah. The flopping is so bad. I understand the cramping. Like that is a lot of running in not a lot of time, and they don't get like drink breaks when they're out there. Like you know, like the NFL obviously go to the sideline for a couple of plays. There's timeouts. There's TV timeouts. They're running around for 50 minutes at a time straight. So I understand that at times, but there are a lot of things about that sport that I don't know. People are addicted to mediocrity i guess i i really don't know how else to put it sorry we're gonna kick england's ass on friday and we'll all like it again just gotta yeah. just gotta tie yeah. at least but yeah the only time i watch soccer is during world cup because yeah. i like to usually root for the americans but uh, i mean it's just, also yeah. it's exciting oh, it is like there's a lot yeah. of tension always right like if you if it's tied or if you're plus or minus one goal there's a lot of yeah. There's a lot of things on the line for that game. So I, I, I see how people are into it. But, like, yeah, the, the flopping is pretty egregious. And that's yeah. that's annoying. And It is annoying. The, the, the last 10 minutes of the game the other day, like, pool Chich even, like, lays down on the ground. He's like, hey, I'm on the ground, and you're not stopping. To, like, get up, man. Yeah, like, it was yeah, like he was, he was like, purposely – yeah. He purposely like went down and tried to prove a point. And, yeah. you know, he's from Hershey. We're not, we're not going to talk too much shit on him. Uh, so <laughs> – yeah, that's an unknown yeah. aspect to this whole weekend, though. Is there's a pretty good sports stuff going on between yeah, well Sunday, then Black Friday with the uh, World Cup plus some college football games, then college football Saturday rivalry weekend, and then yeah. more uh, NFL Sunday. Like it's a lot of football and other stuff to watch this weekend. Yeah, yeah there's a lot of good stuff. It'll be a it'll be an entertaining week, I think. I would hope anyway. I don't see why it wouldn't be. And. Yeah. My high school's in the state semifinals, so I'll be at that game. Where are they playing? North Allegheny, some Pittsburgh school. They have a home playoff game somehow, and it's pretty sick. Wow. 
they, they North won like 57 50 or something this week, right? Some crazy score. It's like 57 50 in triple overtime. Yeah. Did did Joey Porter go to North Allegheny? Yeah. Yeah. And they I beat think the Cousins last week. Yeah. I think Dinkins might have gone there too, if I remember yeah. correctly. Yeah. So, yeah, that's a powerhouse school out there. So, yeah, that'll be a good game. Yeah. We're yeah, second fun. state. So here we go. All right. Yeah. My kids' uh, school is in the third round of the state playoffs this week, but they're going to lose to Atascacita, who you don't know who that is, but they're really good. So, um, I like big, big names down there. Well, yeah, they, I know. Like, I know Allen and, you know, Alexa, so like, uh, Ryan. Yeah, Ryan. Um, but whoever wins this week plays is going to play North Shore next week, and North Shore, Shore is the biggest yeah. Houston. They're the best Houston school. Uh, but our guy, Bert Emanuel, I don't know if you've been watching any Tuesday night action, but he was uh, he's a freshman at CMU, was our quarterback last year, ran for like 250 yards last week and another 100 as Jeez. a quarterback like the following week. Yeah, so nice. it's good to see him get some run. Yeah. Westlake of Houston or is that Austin area? Yeah, Austin. Austin. Yeah. And that they – our team played them this year, got beat pretty good. But that was Kate Klubnik's school uh, – I mean that's where like Breeze went and uh, yeah, and South Lake, West Lake, West Lake, and South Lake. I get mixed up. Sometimes. South Lake's where uh, it was. Uh, it was, yeah. But it's fun. It's yeah. good. The UIL playoffs are exciting, and you got like I don't know. Every school that's in it now has probably seven to ten guys that have Power Five offers. So it's it's a little different. Than game, yeah. How how many people like go to those games? Like it, um, it's a it's like a, a normal show, right? a normal like regular season game isn't that much. It's probably two or three thousand, right? It's like it's a good Pennsylvania game, but you get to okay. like you get to this week. Normally, this week is at the University of Houston Stadium, okay. uh, and it's it's full. It's nearly full, so you got like twenty thirty thousand people there. Yeah, but, I, I, yeah, I, I, yeah. Because I think I remember watching highlights i can't remember if it was ears or klubnik and i think they played at at jerry world and like the whole lower bowl was filled and like that's the state like championship 50, is there. yeah that's like 50 50 60 000 seats so yeah. that that is crazy and there's tons of divisions too though right because they have um they have 1a through 6a and then each of those has two divisions mm -hmm. depending on like so in your district the top two schools make it and the higher um the more attended school goes to division one and the lower attended school goes to division two so there's 12 championships like that for the state and then they have like an eight-man thing for the small towns and stuff like that and they all play that weekend that um in dallas or irving so it's a lot of football people there yeah yeah, yeah. but the only ones texas, that really matter are five a and six a so. yeah i mean texas uh they have a lot of fun places to play i mean that the best high school football destination in uh pennsylvania's hershey park so oh they're not even playing state championship games there anymore oh really i didn't even know that oh they moved so they play it? it's just a random high school it's like cumberland valley high school in mechanicsburg pa <laughs> that so. is so cumberland valley is a big high school but that is uh it's not a good stadium that's... no that's that's pretty sad that like they can't <laughs> find anywhere i i don't know why penn state's in the middle of the state it's you know the biggest school and everything i just feel like yeah. it'd be a perfect place to have it penn I mean, state's already really done like state and recruiting that's something they should look into yeah yeah and i, I think franklin wants to i think he's mentioned wanting to host the it was the PIA, yeah, they, before him. yeah they were involved with it in the pi double h was the high school over mm -hmm. penn state yeah that's that's crazy to me but we always used to have track it. championships at shippensburg which seemed which was okay but you know like you said like every every state championship should be State college. It should yeah, be like random. it's yeah, yeah, a fun thing. The, uh, the softball one is because I remember Hazelton was in it a couple of years ago. There. Yeah, but that's like the only sport. It's just very random. I know my high school was in the volleyball state championship, and we were at um, oh, where did Jerkovic go? Uh, Pine Richland. Pine Richland, yeah, but it was just. It was just Pine. It was just Richland or something. It wasn't his school, but Not it had the name. Yeah, Richland's a whole different school. 
Yeah, it was Richland. Yeah, in outside of Johnstown. Um, so yeah, just like random high schools for state championships in volleyball. It's just very, very odd how they pick that stuff. But yeah, I don't know. Oh well. All right. That well, is, uh, we ran an extra twenty minutes yeah, on nonsense so on good. high school on high school sporting events. So yeah, that was. <laughs> That's great. Uh, if you got if you got this far, you uh, you now know where I'll all send you a turkey. Is. You must send your address. Oh, I'll send you a turkey. Yeah, if you got this far, comment your address. We'll send you a turkey. That way, we'll know. <laughs> all right, we will. Uh, I guess we'll be back next week. Season review, pretty much. Win or lose. Uh, we won't. We won't know the bowl game next week. Obviously, we have to wait for a championship weekend. But I think we'll have a decent idea by the end of next week so we'll uh probably talk next wednesday or thursday then regardless of what happens in this game sound good sounds good all right all right all right we'll see we'll